six years in the making. INEOS's plan to bring US shale gas to Europe has been the company's most ambitious project to date. An unprecedented feat of engineering, deal broking and international strategy. If I look at the people in INEOS, they are the type of people who will rise to challenges and they will take charge of their own destiny. This year, eight ships will make their way from Marcus Hook on the banks of the Delaware River, loaded with a cargo set to re-energise European and UK manufacturing. A project many believed couldn't be done is now about to launch a new chapter in gas transportation. INEOS isn't the type of company that will sit back and wait to see what happens. It's the type of company that will be proactive and define its own future. In 2010, the European chemical industry was reeling from the effects of the financial crisis. The country faces an industrial closure reminiscent of the 80s. Energy prices were volatile and pan-European feedstock shortages, combined with cheap foreign imports, meant that plants were closing and jobs were being lost. It's pretty unthinkable really that you would finish up closing down half your assets in Europe because they couldn't compete on the world scale. Something had to happen, otherwise, you know, the consequences would have been quite dire. In the US, it was a different story. Low energy and feedstock prices have revitalised their industries. Beginning to transform not only the US chemicals industry, but also the US economy. Shale gas was ushering in an era of unprecedented growth. In September 2011, a meeting was held. A plan was devised to seize the initiative and bring that US advantage to Europe. A fleet of ships would create a virtual transatlantic pipeline to supply INEOS's European businesses with the US gas they desperately needed. The only problem? No one had attempted anything on this scale before. The idea at first could sound crazy. It was quite a a gamble from INEOS's point of view. The Appalachian Basin in West Pennsylvania holds some of the world's largest shale deposits. Following years of research, range resources discovered a way to safely extract the natural gas with minimal effect on the environment. This was to be the source of INEOS's new ethane feedstock, and following a deal, the two companies formed a partnership. The only problem was how to get the gas to the coast, 300 miles away. When we embarked on this project, at the beginning of this deal, there really wasn't any sort of ethane infrastructure in Appalachia at all. And so a deal was struck with oil company Sunoco to pipe the gas to a facility west of Philadelphia. Marcus Hook, an almost derelict oil and gas processing site on the banks of the Delaware River, was on the verge of being shut down after more than 100 years. The refining industry in Philadelphia was, uh, was in peril. But with a deal agreed to supply INEOS with ethane for the foreseeable future, investment followed and work began on building a new terminal and state-of-the-art tank to cryogenically store the gas. What I find very exciting about this partnership with INEOS is it really underpins the future of this facility and to see that it will maintain its status and really underpin the growth uh, and the economic stimulus of this area for years to come. The first destination for this new feedstock was chosen to be the INEOS facilities at Raffness in Norway, followed later this year by Grangemouth in Scotland. At both sites, construction began on Europe's largest ethane tanks in order to accommodate the new ships and their cargo. The preparations for the Dragon ships started back in 2012 and has gone continuously since then, ending up with the final construction of the tank in end 2015. With the building of the infrastructure now underway, all that was left to do was build the ships. Crossing the Atlantic Ocean is a huge challenge. But doing it on this scale, with a cargo of liquid ethane, would require a feat of nautical engineering never seen before, and meant a boat redesigned from the keel up. So we teamed up with Evergast to design a vessel which 
could solve the engineering problems of transporting extremely cold liquids across the Atlantic, but do that economically. Teams throughout Europe set to work on a brand new keel, hull and state-of-the-art engine. These were new vessels and as a result would need a new classification. The name given to them, Dragon Class. Sino-Pacific Offshore and Engineering, one of the world's biggest shipbuilders, were commissioned to construct the Dragons. The ship's tanks would be the largest ever built for this purpose, carrying a total of 27,000 cubic metres of supercooled liquid ethane. The hulls were constructed in a block format. Gigantic chunks of the vessels, weighing up to 700 tonnes each, were lowered into a dry dock and fitted together, all within two millimetres accuracy of each other. With the storage tanks in place and the decks completed, the ships were now ready to launch. Over the course of two years, eight boats will launch from Shanghai, bound for the USA to pick up their first cargo. At Marcus Hook, the impact of this venture is plain to see as the transformation of the site is well underway. Today, when you come into Marcus Hook, it's a completely different story. We, we joke about the fact that uh, you know it's hard to find a table in, in the local restaurants for lunch around here because there's so much activity, uh, hundreds if not thousands of contractors that are working here at Marcus Hook as part of the, the, the ongoing redevelopment of the site. That redevelopment meant that the terminal facility was completed and upon their arrival, the first ships were docked and loaded with ethane. To see the boats at Marcus Hook, this is the light at the end of the tunnel we've been waiting for. This project is absolutely leading the way in the industry. Today we stand here in bright sunshine in Marcus Hook and uh, this morning the visit completed loading the 14,500 tons of ethane. So it is a remarkable and actually historic day, I must say. With the first of the eight ships underway, focus shifts to the destination. Three and a half thousand miles away, there is a similar feeling of excitement. When we now finally have the U.S. Um, shale gas coming in, of course, that's a new area for us. It's a new beginning. In Raffness, preparation is complete. The new 35,000 cubic meter storage tank is fully operational and ready for U.S. ethane. People uh, have been working very hard to complete the project and uh, they are very happy because uh, then INEOS has uh, invested in Norway. So it's positive for everybody in uh, Nordic. A project five years in the making, spanning three continents, involving tens of thousands of people. A project to secure the future of INEOS's European businesses is now nearing completion. It's just amazing to, to actually see this project now come to fruition. Hopefully it will secure the future of our, of our business here and you know, for our petrochemical industry in Europe going forwards. On behalf of everyone who's been involved, you know, I feel very proud. Now one shouldn't underestimate the size of the achievement. It's required an immense amount of work, a lot of focus really, a lot of, a lot of challenges. Fantastic achievement by the team. In just a matter of months, this virtual pipeline will extend even further to Ineos's cracker at its largest site in Grangemouth, Scotland. With the first voyage complete, a new era of gas transportation has begun as the dragons breathe new life into the European chemicals industry.